I'd like to talk to you about a recent paper that uh, uh, will be coming out shortly in the journal Science Translational Medicine. And it's a study that's been going on for a number of years. Uh, the overall picture we've been trying to get at is understanding new mechanisms behind a number of different uh, neurological diseases uh, or psychiatric diseases as well. And uh, not much is known about how all of these uh, come about. And in particular, there's a group of diseases that arises during development of the brain. And it's thought that something happens during fetal life that leads to a greater propensity for these diseases, and they include autism, schizophrenia, uh, some types of uh, epilepsy, cerebral palsy. And uh, the, the disease that we uh, are looking at here is something called fetal hydrocephalus. So hydrocephalus is a condition where the brain basically gets filled with fluid. And this fluid uh, is called cerebral spinal fluid. And it, it, it accumulates to such an extent that the heads of these young babies, children, can get extremely large. And currently, the only real treatment is neurosurgical. And that's where one sticks in a shunt little tube to suck out the extra fluid. And these uh, children can uh, uh, gain some degree of um, uh, recovery. But many of them are left with lifelong problems uh, with neurological, psychiatric, uh, disability. The interesting aspect of this from a scientific standpoint is, is a clue that was uh, culled from the uh, clinical literature. And what's seen there is that these uh, young children uh, experienced during fetal life some type of bleeding episode. That is, there was some sort of accumulation of blood or some other trauma or something else that occurred where during fetal life they or their, or their brains uh, became filled with blood. And this is a very strong signal, and it's seen in multinational uh, studies, but the explanation for that has not been clear. So this is where our work on the uh, developing brain, and in particular, a molecular signaling pathway uh, intersected with this disease. So there's a little uh, lipid molecule that we study, and li lipids of fat. And it's called lysophosphatidic acid, or LPA. And we know from many years of work that this lipid acts through a receptor. And these receptors, uh, they're little protein molecules that sit on the cell surface, and they mediate the effects of these lipids. And uh, what we began to study a while back is how these lipids alter brain function, brain development. And indeed, they have a number of different uh, effects on cells of the brain, particularly the neuroprogenitor cells, those cells that give rise to the neurons and glia and other cells within the brain. This is work that was done by a really talented graduate student, Yun Young. And what Yun was able to demonstrate, if he used blood or some blood fractions as the initial stimulus, that too could produce hydrocephalus. And it required the actions of the LPA receptor. In other words, the active component within uh, this blood fraction appears to be LPA. So where does this take us? Well, what it, what it does is it offers a mechanistic explanation at a molecular level for how hydrocephalus might be initiated by this uh, blood exposure that's been seen in the epidemiological literature. And it also ties together a number of disparate observations uh, because all of these comorbid types of phenomena and a number of different animal models that have been previously published could be uh, accessed through LPA signaling. Perhaps most exciting from a therapeutic standpoint is that by virtue of requiring a receptor to bring about these changes, one could target this receptor for inhibition. That is, you could antagonize it, you could block it. And indeed, we in fact showed that some of this can in fact be, uh, be achieved. So if you put a blocker of the receptor into this animal model, you can prevent the formation of fetal hydrocephalus. And what that could suggest is that one day we might have some forms of uh, medically uh, accessible therapies that could alter the progression of this disease. And of course, it's really uh, uh, serious downstream sequelae.